You may have heard of a couple in the Old Testament called Abraham and Sarah. If you have never heard their story, here is a little recap. Abraham and Sarah were married and could not conceive a child, but Abraham loved God and served God. God actually called Abraham, his name means father of many nations. Uh, he changed his name to that before they even conceived a child. So after a lot of drama, if you want all the juicy details, go read Genesis 18. Sarah bore Abraham a son named Isaac. So eventually Sarah lived a long life. She died at 127 years old and shortly thereafter, um, Abraham buried her and then decided it was time to find Isaac a wife. Abraham sent his servant to Abraham's homeland to find a wife for Isaac, uh, but he had a couple stipulations. The woman, the wife, could not be a Canaanite, the land, a woman from the land that they were living in. They were living in foreign land, Abraham and his family were at that time. And the servant could not take Isaac back to Abraham's homeland. So the servant took an oath and went out and set out, took 10 of Abraham's camels, all loaded up with goodies and headed out to um, Abraham's homeland. So the servant sets out, he ends up in Nahor, he and his 10 camels, 10 camels stop <laughs> at a well. He lets the camels rest and he, the servant actually prays to God and asks God to, um, so the servant prays and asks God to send the woman that Isaac is going to marry. He asks that he, bless, that God blesses Abraham and that when he asks a woman for a drink of water, she offers to water the 10 camels as well. 10 camels. Camels can drink 30 gallons of water each. So Abraham, or the servant, Abraham's servant prays that. And before he finished praying, a woman named Rebecca appears with a jar of water on her shoulder. Their jars were about three gallons of water. So he, the servant runs up to Rebecca and asks him for a drink of water. And Rebecca, lo and behold, offers to get water for 10 camels, like 30 gallons of water each. And not just to get water for the camels, drink enough water till they, they've had their fill, till their thirst is quenched. And so this obviously confirmed with Abraham's servant who Isaac was to marry. Did you just notice that God answered the servant's prayer before the servant was even finished praying? If you think about it, God really had to orchestrate this all happening long before the servant arrived at the well. Number one, he had to make sure Abraham sent out the servant at just the right time. He had to prepare Rebecca's heart, not just to be kind enough to a stranger, but also to be really marrying a man that she does not know. Also, he had to have Rebecca arrive at the well and draw the water out at the perfect time. And this sort of precision in our lives, we can see it in the Bible, we can see it in our lives. God orchestrates these things perfectly for us. And it really shows how much time, how much thought, and how much love God puts into our lives. Psalm 37 chapter 4 says, Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So what God did for Abraham, Isaac, Rebecca, the servant, Rebecca's family, they all got blessed at the same time. And God loves to do the same thing for us. God already knows the desires of your heart and he wants to give them to you. God has a path and a plan out of, and he has your life planned out ahead of time. That's Jeremiah chapter 11, Ephesians chapter one, verses three through 14. So I encourage you to trust God. Romans eight twenty eight says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If God puts a story in the Bible, he puts it in there for a reason, whether that reason being to learn more about 
um, our sin condition, to love, to learn more about God's love for us, to learn from the lesson, to learn from the story, and be able to apply that in our lives today. But how can we know how our life ends? If we're going through tough times, how can we know how our situation will end? How can we know what will happen next? So going back to the story, uh, Rebecca offers this to draw water out for this servants, for Abraham's camels. And he, she invites the servant to go back to her father's house with her. They give her a meal. They give the servant a meal. The servant tells them what's going on. And they send Rebecca out back to where Abraham's living. They send the servant with Rebecca and basically just bless them on our way, on their way. Um, so they get back to where Abraham's living and they come and they meet Isaac and Isaac fell in love with Rebecca, married her and Isaac was comforted during the time of his mother's death. And God actually blessed um, Isaac and Rebecca with twin boys and then later on, Abraham passed away and Isaac inherited all of Abraham's wealth. While God does not promise us all sunshine, all roses, no hardships in our life, he does promise to be with us no matter what. And he also blesses us abundantly and greatly, even when we don't deserve it. We don't know what our future will hold. But we do know that with God, we have an eternal hope. Our life does not end just here on earth when we pass away. We will have an eternal life with him in Jesus in heaven. And our hope is in Jesus for this eternal life. That we know no matter what happens on life on earth, we will be with him when we die. So pray and rejoice that God answers your prayers before you pray them. He delights in answering your prayers and he has a hope and a plan, a future for your life. If you have not yet heard the gospel, the gospel is this, that God has made us to be reconciled back to him through Jesus Christ. God loves us, but when we were born, we were separated from him because of sin. So God sent Jesus to die for our sins, who had the man who had no sins, who lived on lived life on earth, never sinned once. He was completely innocent. He got the death penalty, the punishment for our sins. So that way, through faith in Jesus Christ, we can have a relationship, a right standing relationship with our Father in heaven. So if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you wish to turn to him, repent for your sins and receive the free gift of salvation, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus who you sent to die for me. I declare that Jesus is your son, Jesus is God, and I want to live my life for him. So I accept Jesus and I turn from my sins and I thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus name, amen. Be blessed. God loves you so much and I hope you have a great day.